Hello everyone. So last video I talked about emptiness and this is a continuation from the last video to further discuss the concept of emptiness and how modern science, especially in the field of quantum physics, has proved what Buddha said was right 2600 years ago that all is emptiness and all conditioned phenomena are actually illusions and how our mind can actually create our reality we experience. So before I dive deep into this discussion, uh, I'd just like to uh, tell you something very interesting that happened uh, just now when I had lunch with my family. So in front of us, we had um, some dishes and one dish uh, was the potato dish, the Chinese style stir fry potatoes. So when I taste the dish, I was like, ah, oh, this is too sweet. When my grandma tasted the dish, she was like, oh, this is too sour. And when my aunt tasted the dish, the same dish, she was like, oh, this is both too sweet and too sour. So three of us had completely different perception, opinion, and experience with the same dish of potato. And true nature of the potato dish is just emptiness. It's just as it is. So emptiness is the true nature of all things. And emptiness doesn't mean that there is nothing in the Hell Sutra. It says form is emptiness and emptiness is a form. Form is no different from emptiness. Three of us had totally different perceptions when we experienced that potato and hence it creates different reality for three of us. Again, this proves how our perception really creates the reality we experience. So when I talk about reality, I often put a quotation mark because it's not the really the true reality we perceive. The reality we perceive simply depends on our mind, on our perception, on our uh, level of consciousness. So when we experience the same situation, even being in the same space doing the same thing, we may experience completely different reality due to our perception, due to our mind. So that is why our mind actually creates the reality we live in. The reality only exists as it is. The reality we perceive simply it's a projection of our mind, it simply depends on our perception. So we are actually the director and the creator of the reality that we experience. We are actually creating our own world. This is why Buddha says that the mind is everything, the mind creates the reality what we think we become. So our thought, our consciousness, our mind actually create the reality and how it has the ability to shape the reality. But with the true nature of the reality being as it is and being emptiness in nature. Modern science has actually proved that there is no such thing as material. What we perceive as material is actually largely made up of emptiness. So why did the scientists say that, especially in quantum physics? So in the past, the scientists thought the materials were fixed and solid, just as how we perceive with our physical eyes. You know, we think, for example, the cum is solid, the table is solid, the chair we're sitting on is solid. And then later, the scientists discovered that the materials were actually made up by smaller particles like the atoms, uh, which are made up by electrons, neutrons, and protons. And they thought, again, this was solid. And then later scientists discover even tinier particles like the quark. And they realize even the quarks they are largely made up by empty space. And in the end they realize there is actually no such thing as material. And all these particles they could actually exhibit like waveform or we could understand it as frequency. And all this, what's actually manifesting them is the consciousness. It may be difficult for us to think just with uh, the level of understanding that we have now, but the quantum physics have also proved it. It's exactly like what the Buddha says. Our mind, our consciousness actually creates the reality we live in. If you think of any object that you see now, it is because someone's mind is behind this and hence we create this object. The whole world is a manifestation of the collective consciousness and we each individual create our own world but then the whole of the world is also created by all different consciousness. 
So I'll insert a link below about uh, the parallels between Buddhism and science, especially in the field of quantum physics, how they have actually proved what Buddha said was right. Materials doesn't exist, or it exists depending on the observer, the perceiver. I don't know whether you have this experience, but it happened to me quite a lot of times is when my mind becomes really quiet. Maybe after uh, some time of meditation, how I perceive the reality is completely different. You know, when my mind is um, a bit more cluttered, I could actually see all this physical materials, they're not fixed, I see them moving. And I could see all these small particles or all like wave-like energy, you know, moving very fast like in this entire space. And that's why in the Diamond Sutra, the Buddha says all conditioned phenomena are illusions. When we say illusions, it doesn't mean that we deny phenomena, but what this means is that they are simply just changing all the time, they are moving, it's not like solid and fixed. Also even our feelings, our sensations, all these are illusions, they are constantly changing. We could be upset in one moment and happy in the next moment. That's why we should not be too attached to these feelings, sensations and whatever we experience because they are simply illusions with the true nature of being emptiness. So a famous verse from the Diamond Sutra says, all conditioned phenomena are like a dream, an illusion, a bubble, a shadow, like a dew or a flash of lightning. Thus is the way we shall perceive them. Hence, we should not be attached to whatever feeling sensations that we currently experience and just know that they are all illusions. They are created by our mind. That is why if we want to change our reality, if we want to change our so-called destiny, then we have to change our thoughts and begin with our thoughts. And so the good saying that attitude is everything is indeed very true. If we see all these uh, so-called successful people in the world, we will realize a lot of the shared common trait is that they're very resilient. They always see the bright side and they're always positive regardless of what situations they might face. So it's really important for us to be positive and to be resilient and not to be uh, sort of trapped in our negative thinking. That is why it's really important for us to practice meditation, to practice Niang Fu, to chant the name of Amitabha Buddha repeatedly so we can transform our thoughts into infinite light and infinite life, to always remain positive no matter what situations we might encounter.